the red arrow you will see is our direction of travel. So we're going to be moving in a clockwise fashion through quadrant one into quadrant two through quadrant four and then into quadrant three. Don't get mixed up by the numbers. All right. It's just how they've been ordered. Uh, within each quadrant, several zones have been designated. They contain certain compounds, buildings that are enterable and non-enterable. Important that all of these zones are cleared, but note the clearing that we are doing today is a soft clear. Now, what I mean by a soft clear is that you are looking through windows, you are looking through doorways for any potential threat that you may see. But if you see no threats, you are not to enter any buildings. All right, that slows our momentum down. We want to make sure we keep our momentum forward. We don't want to get stuck in any particular place. A threat can be defined as anyone who's brandishing a weapon, if you find an IED factory, a recruitment center, anything like that. Another thing that is important to note, if you find anyone who happens to be using binoculars, you are to detain them, not kill them. They could be hostile forces. They could also be bird watchers. I don't know, but we need to be sure that we're not killing civilians just because we're a little bit suspicious. Um, you are authorized to detain these individuals with binoculars and then also search them and look for any type of incriminating evidence, such as radios, maps, and cell phones. Oftentimes, these guys are spotters, and they will be radioing in our location, which helps the enemy coordinate a counterattack. Um, it's important to note here that this is the Taliban's last stand here. Okay, This is the, their last stronghold within the region, so it's important for us to strike hard while, the, while we can before they're fully fortified. But as we experienced last week, they are starting to utilize some of their very um, expensive equipment such as BTRs and even potentially BMPs. The town is likely full of in, uh, personnel with uh, anti-air, so air support is going to be limited initially, but if we continue to strike and we move forward and eliminate with extreme prejudice, we might be able to get some help from the air as quickly as possible. Note that the guys in Ovalistan may or may not be dug in. So we had a reconnaissance that went on earlier this week and we found that there were large numbers of troops being moved into the city. And at the time they were building fortifications. We are not really sure how quickly they were able to establish any, but it could be potentially very hard to move through some of the denser urban areas. That being said, you need to coordinate with one another and work hard with one another to try and maneuver around these um, impediments and continue and not get bogged down. I can't stress how important it is to not be bogged down. Uh, I've advised some potential movements to your squad leads and the uh, platoon level, who will then dictate that later uh, before we step off in about 10 minutes. Um, today, as you can see, our numbers are a little slim, but that's all right. We're going to consolidate down into a single large team. Uh, the lead for that team will be Sergeant First Class Hodges. Uh, the two team leads for that main element will be Sergeant First Class Bubbleo and Staff Sergeant Pendola. Uh, the additional support team will be led by Sergeant Bluford in the weapons capacity, but the, the, um, all the directives and strategic positionings will come from Hodges. Um, as this has been stated earlier, we are missing our medics there was a medic con apparently and everyone couldn't be here uh that being said it's really important that we take things methodically don't go into open territory that you know is a death trap you know move mindfully and use all of the training that you've gotten so far to be safe uh we will set up ccps wherever we can and we'll continue to make we'll continue to occupy strongholds that will provide strategic use for us to treat our wounded um, in the event that we start taking many prisoners, we're going to house them at our CCPs or at our fortified positions, however we see fit, until we are certain that we can bring air assets in close and low without losing them. Once we've moved through Quadrant 3, we'll establish a uh, pickup zone through CCTs. All the guys will board up and we'll head home. We'll do our debrief, and then we'll get the logistics team to start breaking down the base, and we're all going to go stateside. Any questions? How many prisoners do we think we could possibly see? The range is 
pretty indeterminate generally um it really depends many of the prisoners you would probably take would be members with binoculars but if they start brandishing a weapon at that point they're not going to be prisoners if you catch my drift um i do so generally on the last raid where prisoners were taken we took seven prisoners um that was also in the dead of night, though, where there were very few contacts, so it's hard to estimate. Okay. Any other questions? Do we need to bring extra medical supplies? It's, no medics? It's, it's advised to bring some extra medical supplies in order to make sure that you can treat one another in the event that someone goes down. Um, yeah, I would definitely load up a little bit. Since we'll be moving pretty slowly through this urban terrain, it's not that vital to remain light. So if you want to add an extra 10 bandages or something like that, that would definitely be advised. Question? Yeah. Supplies. Um, obviously, I know that. You know, you're going through these uh, compounds and that, so they can slow. You're going to be working through them. If they're enterable or not, and if you have probable cause to go inside, and it comes to people with ammo and stuff like that, are we at some point going to be getting an, a supply drop? Supplies will be brought in as soon as possible. Again, it's a matter of how quickly can we secure the airspace. So the sooner we can secure the airspace or a section of airspace to provide a reasonably safe entry, um, that's how quick we can get extra munitions in. Fantastic. Um, one last one from my team. Um, yeah. You said that uh, Sergeant First Class Hodges will be coordinating certain uh, places and that for elevated positions, um, especially up for my guys and that, about to give that uh, elevated position to support the guys on the ground. Um, are my guys allowed to, you know, these certain buildings that have elevated positions, if they can use it mm. to support the guys on the move. I think I think so long as obviously taking initiative is one thing, and that's an important aspect of of being a forward moving team. But also bearing in mind that if a building is is occupied, and then the order comes to not occupy that building, that it is respected. You know, there's yeah. a cer certain degree of autonomy, which is allowed, but then also following the chain of command is critical. Yeah, I'll, I'll generally ask, obviously. Yep, naturally. Uh, yeah, just and tell me what you're thinking before you do it. All I care is what you're thinking. Yep, that's one. So long as the communication Especially is if there, I can't see it. it's it's just critical that that chain of that communication stay open so that we can keep track of everybody and not leave anyone behind. That's one yep. more thing I want to quickly harp on. We are clearing these quadrants as a unit. That means we don't exit the quadrant until it's clear and the order comes, right? We, we will reconsolidate and we will move on to the next one. It's all about being methodical. It's about following the protocol. It's about maintaining that discipline that will allow us to not die and fuck shit up. So with Same that being goes said, for the, the each compound, too. So, yeah. for example, pro, like a simple process is enter the compound, secure the compound, do a quick soft clear of the buildings, but secure the exit of wherever you're going to be exiting from and get all that situated and and your navigation of where you're going nice under control while the rest of the element quickly clears what needs to be cleared once it's you know all cleared and you have that coordination radio it up and then wait for the command to move forward because depending on the speed at how people get that done and the train that they have to, to cover to even do this that may throw things off a little bit but just let me know what you're thinking if you see a problem that needs to be addressed that hasn't been addressed. I don't want to tell you not to solve the problem. Just let me know what you're thinking. Thanks, All right. So that being said, got a new question for you boys. Some of you know the answer. If you know the answer, shout it out. What makes grass grow? Uh, we do Light feet. from God, whose name Dead is Dead Body. Yeshua Hamashiach. Blood. Probably sun light and water. Blood. 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 What makes grass grow? Blood, gentlemen. So let's go water some grass. All right, get formed up. We're stepping off the five. All right, one four. One eight.